Hey, welcome to the Full Octane Garage, and today's topic is going to be, is the 2020 Corvette going to be the most desirable, lowest production, and rarest Corvette in modern history? Okay, here we are in early April, and I got to thinking, had I placed an order for a 2020 Corvette, would I have ever seen it? And that's going to be a big question for a lot of people who've actually ordered a 2020 Corvette. The production numbers are going to be so low, at least that's my estimation, they're going to be so low that many, many people who ordered a 2020 Corvette will not be getting a 2020 Corvette in 2020. So. 2019 total production numbers, they made 34,000 Corvettes total. And that was in you know the 12-month run. They had a full 12-month run. Now, let's step up to 2020. 2020 Corvettes are not ever, they've never been intended to have a full 12-month run. They were going to start you know, originally in, in December, and then the strike hit, and then they started pushing it to January. So really, production didn't even start until February. So then February hits, and they manage to get a full month in, and you start thinking about what does a full month really mean? So if you, if you look at GM's numbers, they anticipated that for the 2020 Corvette run, which was originally going to be a little bit longer, they were going to produce 40,000 units, and that would be over probably a full 11 to 12 months. Now if you think about the 34,000 units that it took, that they were able to knock out in 2019, you divide that by 261 working days, and that's probably generous because with union holidays, things like that, it's probably going to be less, but that turns out to be about 133.4 cars per day out of the plant, and that's with a you know, a well-oiled machine uh, and a well-tuned uh, benchmark that they could work off of. So, you figure 133 cars a day produce 34,000 cars. Now, the 2020 run is supposed to be 40,000 cars. So, if you, if you take that same philosophy of 153 units a day is what it would take to produce 40,000 cars in a 12-month run, compared to them only producing 133 cars a day. So that's a, a significant increase. That's 20-some-odd uh, cars a day on a new production run that they really haven't had a chance to refine. They haven't had line breakdowns to monitor yet. They haven't had supplier issues to deal with. So they're going to have a new production run. They're going to have all new suppliers, all new parts, train staff, and their expectation is they're going to produce one more car an hour than a previously refined test run. I don't know how they're going to accomplish that, but let's say they do. The next thing that they're expected to do is they're going to do this in a shortened period. So the shortened period is going to be you know, about nine months to produce 40,000 cars. If you do that, they would have to do 15.3 cars per hour, which is a couple of cars an hour above what their 11 point, uh, what is 11.2 estimate was. Are they going to be this aggressive? No way. So, the strike hits. You know, the strike hit the, the production early on. When the strike hit the production, uh, that knocked about three to four months out of production. If you take that they can produce 11.2 cars an hour, they plan on running two full shifts, and everybody thinks two full shifts. Oh my gosh, that's going to be 16 hours. But no, 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 the union comes to play. The union agreed to a 7.23 work hour day. So that turns out to be a true work day between two shifts of 14 and a half hours. 14 and a half hours at 11.2 cars an hour would 
produce 162 cars a day. And that's a very aggressive day. So 162 cars a day. Now let's take 20 working days in the month of February, ballpark 20 working days in a month, and multiply that times the 162.4 cars. That means that there's around 3,200. Let's say with any work stoppages or supply issues, let's be very generous to them. I know you've had some. Uh, they have 3,000 cars on the ground for the month of February. Now we get to the event that's been going on. And right now, we're probably a month into the event. It's early April. Uh, that means that Corvette production has been stopped for probably close to a month. And now, when will we get back to work? I've talked to some people who are on the line levels working at GM, and they were supposed to go back in May 31st. Okay, so that's June. That has now been extended to indefinite at the moment. What does indefinite mean? If indefinite to me would mean that if everything gets under control over the next 30 to 45 days, you know, let's be generous here and say that they get back to work and producing cars in July, okay? So July 1st, they go back to work. They've now lost four months. So what do we have? That's, uh, you know, 33, uh, 66, uh, 12,000 12, and some change cars that they've lost for the production year. Meanwhile, they're not going to hit anywhere near the 40,000 number. So let, let's be honest about that. The dealers, when they found out that production wasn't going to start until February, had some 10 or 20 percent reductions launched to various dealers. So if they hadn't sold their allocation or got some allocation pulled back, so the production numbers were already going to be down from the 40,000. So let's be generous and let's say that they can actually get back on July 1st and let's say they go ahead and we want to finish out some 2020s. We're going to push the 2020 run further into the year. Let's say we push it to the end of October, which is very unusual because they normally produce the line changes over starting around August. So that's going to leave them four months of production left after the event has completed if they get back to work on July 1st. So that's going to be July, August, September, October. So that's four full months. Now, four full months can produce 12,900 cars at their current production rate of two shifts at 11.2 cars per hour. And that's all perfect world. So think about this. They get the production lines back up. Are they going to have any supplier issues? Are suppliers still going to be in business? I mean, there's a lot of unknowns at this point. They may have to find a new supplier stream. Do they have enough cars, enough parts in the, in the warehouse to make 12,000 cars? Not with just-in-time delivery. I highly, highly doubt that. So here's what I predict. I predict that they may get a two-month run of 2020s that's left in this year. I think that they're probably going to get back in July. They'll start July, they'll go through uh, August, and they'll have like two full months before the 2021 cutovers, and they're going to produce somewhere in the range of another 6,600 cars. So if you take the 6,600 cars on the last half of the year and add it to the 3,000 and some change at the beginning of the year, they're going to have about 9,600 cars on the ground for 2020. That is the lowest production number that we've had since 1959. 1959, we produced 9,670 cars. So it is very, very possible that this 2020 C8 Corvette production run will be maybe less than a 1959 Corvette production run, which was all handcrafted cars. So, are you going to have the rarest Corvette ever? Eh, I don't know about the rarest, but you're going to have an extremely rare Corvette. You are getting into production numbers that fall in line with exotic supercars. I mean, they can make between five and 10,000 cars a year probably. So now you're looking at a very, very exotic car built in the U.S. by no fault of anybody's is going to be probably one of the lowest production runs of modern history in Corvettes. And I think that that's going to be somewhat unique. Now, 
I think it's probably a good idea that I didn't purchase a 2020 because I would have been frustrated waiting. I probably would have been at the end of the 2020 run, which means that I would not have gotten a 2020. I would have probably been into the 2021 range. Now that really begs the question, what is GM going to do with all of these reservations that they have for 2020 Corvettes? They're expecting to fulfill, let's say, 25,000 on the conservative side. Say they only produce 9,600, of which 3,000 may already be on the street right now. So you're talking, gosh, the numbers are crazy. You're talking over half of the cars that have been reserved are never going to be delivered in 2020. So that's going to push them into a 2021 production run. And that's going to make all of the dealers now change all of their 2021 production allocations that they thought they had for new clients and probably bump them out into later 2021 when you thought and you probably took my recommendations from past videos to go buy a 2021 reservation than, rather than a 2020 because of the late delivery, you would be buying a year old car. Well, sadly, you may be buying a year old car in 2021 at this point. There's a lot to take in here. The numbers are just mind boggling that the production numbers could be this, have the risk of being this low. I hope I'm wrong. Gosh, I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong for the economy. I hope I'm wrong for the automobile industry. I hope I'm wrong for all of you guys out there that are feeling the pain of what we're going through right now. Um, I certainly don't want to take light of what's going on in the world right now. It is a very, very tough situation for a lot of people. This video is really purely entertainment. It's something to kill your day while you're sitting there looking at YouTube. Or you're tired of looking at TV shows. I have been sitting here thinking about the numbers in my head and I finally put it to paper. And uh, I was really, really surprised at what I was able to calculate out. I honestly thought they produced more Corvettes in a day. Uh, I've heard some people at the plant say that they could possibly produce up to 600 Corvettes uh, a day. That would be astonishing numbers considering the past history of builds. Uh, if, if they were able to produce that, that would be incredible. Um, they may come back for two months and bring three shifts if they can get enough people, get enough supplies and that would make the Corvette run a little bit better for this year. But guys, this is serious stuff. Um, I am really disappointed for all of you folks that have a 2020 reservation in. I know the excitement feeling. I've gone through the order process in the past and uh, my heart goes out to you. And, uh, and I hope you don't give up on your dream. I hope you hang out and wait for a 2020 or a 2021, or if it's a 2022, whatever it takes to get through this tough time and to get you into your dream vehicle, stick with it. And uh, I think you're gonna have a blast. Thanks for being with us. If you like our videos, don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have comments about this one, if some of my numbers are a little wacky, hey, feel free to call me out and tell me I'm crazy. Um, but I honestly, this is kind of my prediction of what I'm seeing going on in the, uh, the production runs and, and following history. Um, and let me stop you all right here. The 1983 Corvette does not count because it was never produced. So don't give me the, hey, you missed it. The, the smallest production run was a 1983 Corvette because they made two uh, of one, one exists today. So it wasn't a production car. It was a prototype car. Um, but nice try. Thanks for playing and come back and see us.